Hello everyone, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, we are going to be having a look at, like, hey, what if Starship just completely bombs and just, it just fails and we need to, like, go to Mars still because that'd be fun, right? Because we like Mars, right? So, I decided to kind of make this little hypothetical mission um, where basically we try to use all the current technology that's, like, basically already flight-proven technology and see if we could kind of assemble, cobble together, would be probably a more accurate word, uh, a mission to send crew to Mars or Dune and KSP and then, and then back. Um, all while, you know, using already flown stuff, like a Falcon 9. So, uh, there it goes. We have staged away the booster, which is not going to do its boost back burn and come back for a landing. And, uh, yeah, we have a Crew Dragon on top, which is basically going to be the main capsule for the Mars mission. So, uh, the Crew Dragon uh, is... So, the reason I chose Dragon is, A, it's a pretty big capsule. Um, B, it's already flown. You know, Starliner hasn't flown. Um, and, and C is actually the biggest reason. If you guys heard about the Red Dragon mission, um, which Elon would talk about, um, was the possibility of landing a dragon on Mars. You know, granted, this is supposed to be like stuff that's already happened, um, but this is, you know, this is the closest capsule that's ever come, that's ever, you know, they've, they've actually designed stuff. So I feel like this capsule, out of any capsule, would probably be the most realistic to have the best shot at landing at Mars. You know, it's not a, an Apollo capsule can't, like, because this thing has the Super Dracos, um, so that's basically why. So this thing is gonna do the Mars landing. But we're actually going to go to our second launcher. We're going to go over to Russia now. And this will be launching part of our transfer stage. So uh, this is a Proton rocket. Um, and in it is a Zvezda module. So the Zvezda is one of the modules on the International Space Station. Pretty cool module. Um, one of the first modules, actually. And uh, what this is basically going to be is going to be our habitation module. So the crew can actually not be crammed in a tiny little dragon capsule the entire trip out to Mars. So we do a little bit of a... A little bit of a flip maneuver there, didn't mean to do that. This thing was so unstable, I don't know what was going on with this mod. Um, but the point is, it worked out at the end. Um, we had a little extra fuel, so it was, it was all, all jolly all day, right? Um, so this is going to dock up with the Dragon, um, which is going to be serving as basically where the Kerbals are just going to hang out on their very long voyage out to Zadunas. Um, and then there'll be actually uh, one more piece to the kind of the spacecraft that will be, uh, you know, that will be heading out to Mars. Um, because the Dragon, while it can't land, it has parachutes and it has those Super Dracos to land on, on Luna with, it does not have anywhere near remotely, considerably anything remote, I don't know what I'm talking about, insert, you know, words that, you know, all mean the same thing. Basically, it doesn't, it doesn't have enough fuel to get off the ground, basically. It can get off the ground, it'll fly for maybe 10 seconds, run out of fuel, and then crash, you know? So, um, there does need to be another way of getting off of the surface of, of Duna here. So that was... That's a bit of a doozy, right? Because there are not many, like, Mars landers. Because uh, there are a lot of proposed missions, but, you know, it's sort of trying to see what the, the already flown stuff. And here comes our first docking of the video. They kind of, like, repel each other weird. They're doing, like, some spinny spinnies. But the point is, it was an SAS thing, so I just had to fix it. Anyway, uh, point is, I'd like to quickly do the plugs here um, just before the next launch because that'd be cool. So if you want to subscribe, that'd be really cool uh, to the channel. That'd be, I guess, pretty epic. If you want to become a member, that'd also be pretty epic. You get, like, shouted out in all the videos. Well, not shout out, but you get showed up on a screen, you know. You get early access and stuff, craft files, all that fun stuff. Um... Uh, you should join our Discord, you also subscribe to my Stream Highlights channel and do all the other stuff like merch and stuff. Alright, plugs are done, let's continue with the video. So, uh, here is a Saturn 1B, uh, which is going to be kind of yeah, a little bit older hardware. Which is what's going to be used for our next, our, our next, uh, spacecraft here, and that is actually going to be the Apollo Lander. So, uh, I chose the Apollo Lander as our Mars Ascent vehicle, um, because it's really the only thing that can maybe even do this. Um, so basically the way this is going to work is we are going to dock up the, the three parts of the spacecraft and we're going to grab a little bit of a transfer stage. Um, what will happen is that when you get into the uh, Martian or the Duna atmosphere, um, it will all separate up so the uh, Dragon itself will do its own propulsive landing with the crew on board. Um, and then the, the, the lander, the Apollo lander, will then continue uh, to fly and then it will actually land under parachute um, onto the surface of Mars, or Duna, I don't know what to call it, Duna, or I'll call it Duna because it's KSP. Um, land on the surface of Duna, um, and then it will have, it'll be completely fully fueled on the surface, and then the Kerbals can just walk in, hop in, and when it's time to go, they will, they will leave. So, um, I chose the, uh, Saturn 1B to launch lander because it's actually really the only thing that has oh, ever launched a dedicated lander to low Earth orbit. Um, because they did tests, it was one of the Apollo missions, they did tests with the lander, um, and they did it in, in, in orbit. So there we go, kind of dock up, and that is going to be most of our, um, vehicle completed. 
um, as we get ready to stage away the uh, S4B stage there. And now we're actually, oh, explosives. We're actually going to get ready to a, for a double launch, uh, because these are basically the same thing, and they are Saturn V's! Very epic Saturn V's. Um, yeah, we have two, two, two big old Saturn V's, um, and the left one there kind of freaks out there and has issues getting off the, off the pad, but, um, these look a lot like Skylab Saturn V's, but these are not actually Skylab Saturn V's. So if you know what the Skylab mission is, basically like the first American space station. Um, and Skylab itself is actually a hollowed out S4B or the third stage of a Saturn V. So I figured, hey, what if we just don't hollow it out? Um, because, but that, but yeah, and that's what we did. So um, we need obviously a way to get to Duna, right? So what I, what I figured is we should use S4Bs because they are basically the only the, the highest energy of these like basically vacuum stages um and they did translunar injection for apollo missions um which is basically what they were used for they used for a little bit to get into orbit and then a little bit for the tli but since we don't have an apollo spacecraft on top of the saturn 5 the saturn they actually the actual bottom two stages have just enough delta v to push the entire um third stage into an orbit and um, there's two of them, and I will get to why there are two of them in just a moment, and because you can get set for the docking. Sorry, things are, things are kind of going kind of fast here. There's a lot of lot of lot of bits to this mission, so uh, yeah, just just in the pursuit of this video not being super long and boring, um, stuff does kind of go pretty quick here. So I'm gonna probably try and keep up with the commentary. Kind of hard. Um, point is, um, there's two of them, so basically they're both identical. So this first S4B will be uh, attaching to the spacecraft itself, and that's gonna be pushing us out to Duna, right? It'll do the, you know, the whatever thousand meters a second burn uh, to get out to Duna, which it should be able to do, um, because it is fully fueled, unlike, with, you know, less than fully fueled on the Apollo missions, and, you know, it actually um, is not that much more Delta V to go to the, to Duna than it is to the moon, 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 moon. Um, it's only a few hundred, two meters a second, so, um, granted the spacecraft is a bit heavier um, than an Apollo, but it does have the Delta V, um, and what the second one is actually going to be doing, it is actually going to be sending itself um, completely empty, not like what obviously has fuel, but it has no spacecraft or anything. It's going to be sending itself out to Duna, and then um, while this one that we're attaching right now is going to just crash into the into the surface of the planet, the other one is going to actually get into an orbit using air braking, um, and then it will basically just wait for the uh, lander to take off. And then what it will do is it will dock up with the lander, and then that other stage will serve as our return stage. So there's yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of launches here for this one. Um, uh, and basically nothing's reusable too, which is, except for the uh, Falcon booster. Uh, but now it's time to plan our trans Martian Duna in trajectory uh, to get out uh, using our first S4B burn of the video. This is basically our completed spacecraft. Looks pretty cool in my opinion. And especially those waterfall, you know. Uh, I also, yeah, kind of a little bit of a quick tangent, now I actually get ready for the other one to launch, to do, to do a little bit of its burn. I was, I was really debating whether or not to do stock or modded for this video, but I eventually decided on modded because I just cannot make a Falcon 9, and I know I needed Falcon 9, so if you're wondering why it's, it's modded and not stock, um, literally, Falcon 9s, I can't make them, um, I am physically incapable, and dragons, I'm physically incapable of making those two, so... That's literally the only reason there's a bunch of mods here instead of stock. Uh, also, could have done this with real solar system, but I did not want to have to delve into the world of RO and RP1 and all that. Like, these mods are a mess uh, to try to get all these mods working together. Like, Blue Ogg Design Bureau and Tundra and Tantaries uh, Soviet, and there's another one. It's crazy. But now we're going to do... I'm getting behind already. Crap. Uh, we have to do the reorganization. Um, so basically what we did is we decoupled the lander and then... Or the, the Apollo lander and then the Dragon. Um, which is going to be doing, they're going to be coming in for controlled landings. Um, the uh, Zvezda and the S4B will just be crashing into the surface. And here we are doing our entry um, with the Dragon uh, coming in. Now it's going to have both parachutes and Super Dracos. What we actually kind of have to do um, because, you know, the parachutes are actually kind of like, they're, they don't come straight out the middle of the craft. What we do is actually light up the Dracos and then what I do is actually uh, jettison the chutes. Um, so the last bit of the landing is done completely propulsively just so we can stay as upright as possible now. Um, so here it goes, coming in, and touchdown! Very epic! The crew are down, and now it's time to get the lander down. The lander is coming down, very epic. And it's starting to scrub off its velocity, getting ready for its parachute deployment. We're trying to say basically every meter a second as possible in the lander, or the Apollo lander. Um, so it's actually going to be landing completely just under parachute. 
um, because we don't really care about crew comfort here. Um, we really don't because it smashes the ground at 35 meters a second and somehow manages to survive that absolute chad. So, um, you know, I could have put the uh, the crew in the lander and they wouldn't even need the dragon. But the reason I, I didn't do that is because I'm just pretending like, hey, I bet the Apollo lander is completely full of like, you know, food and life support and, you know, stuff like that. So that's probably, they, they couldn't, there's no room. You know, that's kind of... That's going on my head cannon as to why they're landing on the dragon. It actually makes sense. But now we're going to go ahead and plant our Tundra flag. I don't know why it had this flag. I was originally had a Kim Jong-un flag. It was going to be great. Um, but uh, I don't know. It just set the wrong flag. But anyway, this is our other S4B, which is now coming into the Duna atmosphere. So this is the second one. Um, this is going to be the return stage. So you can see we basically... Um, we have to burn uh, very, very little fuel to get it to uh, circ. We're not. We're actually. We're not actually going for a circular orbit. We're going for quite an elliptical orbit, um, as you will see right about now. So yeah, that's basically the orbit. And now we are going to fade to black and wait for a transfer window. And all right, here's our transfer window. Time to head back. It's yes, really it's going fast. Very epic pacing. I don't know. Uh, is this good pacing? I don't know. I feel like my editing is never that good. I don't know, maybe it is. But either way, Kerbals come and are going to actually walk over to the lander. And I totally didn't use Vessel Move to get the Kerbals over there because the lander didn't totally didn't land 60 kilometers away because that totally didn't happen. Um, and now we're going to get both of our Kerbals. This Kerbal had a little bit a little bit of an issue getting his head in. Maybe it was know, all the food, you know, doing a point is, time to go. Who's ready to go? Back in the air. We are in the air. We are flying. The Apollo lander is very... Very, very slow. This thing could barely do it. I actually, I checked the maps. It should be able to do this in real life. With asterisks everywhere. Should, maybe, potentially. So it takes, so orbital velocity on, on Mars in real life is about three and a half kilometers a second. And the Apollo landers have just over four kilometers a second of Delta V. So... It, in theory, could work if the thing could get off the ground. This thing was incredibly slow. Like, I mean, look at the speed. This is sped up, like, super, super fast. And it is just, it is just slow as crap here. Um, you can see here, I'm just about to deplete the, uh, the bottom stage. Um, and there it goes. Now it's time for the upper stage. And, yeah, this thing was just slow. We actually, this is my second attempt. My first attempt, the thing just did not get off the... Duna's atmosphere is, like, deceivingly thick. Um, so that's why we had such a steep ascent profile. Um, like, we basically were not even accelerating during my first attempt at, during the ends of the uh, bottom stage burn. But now we're going to uh, do a little bit of a crossfade over to our docking because playing around with maneuver nodes is not exactly entertaining. Um, so there you go. Going to come up with our second transfer vehicle. Um, now, the reason this thing has enough Delta V to do both a, you know, both a trans Mars or trans dune injection and a uh, back to Kerbin. Also, about, we're lowering our orbit because I kept getting random Ike encounters. So that's that. Um, it's because A, this S4B had no payload when it was going out, so it was able to expend a lot less fuel because it weighed less. And also, our, our, um, our spacecraft to head back is literally just the lander. So this is the bit where there's a little bit of a plot hole in this mission. Um, is the, uh, the Kerbals, the two Kerbals are stuck on that puny little Apollo lander for however many hundreds of days it takes to get back. And hey look, we're back! Because I just, I, I crossfaded past all the, uh... Uh, correction burdens because they're boring. Um, so th yeah, they're they're probably a bit crap. I mean, it's only like six, seven months. They'd be fine, but uh, but they're not fine. That's how they're going to enter because they're in a, a lander, an Apollo lander, which is not meant for carbon entry. And OMG, we need to get another dragon. OMG. Um, so yeah, they come. So the, the way this works is they, the SRV will bring them back, and then the, the Apollo lander will just be hanging out, bring it back low, low carbon orbit, and then there's obviously no way for the Apollo lander to orbit itself because it would melt. It has no heat shield. Um, so basically, we need to send up another capsule, um, and uh, I just ended up doing a dragon because it's really the only option. It's not like you can like I guess you could have done an Apollo capsule, but you know, this is cheaper, you know, in, in real life, you know, because. You know, reusable, right? And there's only two Kerbals, so there's no real point. We can send up one Kerbal here to go, because uh, the Apollo capsule is quite big. Um, I mean, Dragons too, but... Um, so, Booster is going to come back for a landing back at the... Um, back at the uh, the Space Center. They have to do, do a little entry burn. Um, actually, today uh, was the... Uh, what mission was it? It was the Transporter 2 mission. I, I watched that. It was the first uh, you know return to launch site landing in a, in a long time on Falcon, which is pretty dope. Um, so yeah, gonna go ahead and get ourselves into an orbit, and then we'll be getting ready to, after the boost lane, very epic, I'm getting ready to, uh, rendezvous with the lander, and then the Kerbals, which have been stuck in there for a very long time, that lander will have to, uh, 
In real life, he'd probably go crazy. I don't know. I may maybe because it's like six months. I don't know. I could potentially see people possibly surviving, and I mean, that is really cramped. Uh, it would be very boring up there, but I'm sure they could. They could maybe. Maybe it'd be pushing the limits, but maybe you know. So, point is, here it is. Here is our dragon, and the docking port sizes aren't compatible because the uh, the dragon has a normal size, and then the lander has a mini size. Is how the size of the parts. Um, so they had to do a little bit of a spacecraft, a spacecraft, a space walk to get across um, each of the uh, to get get to the dragon. But there we go. We can jettison the Falcon upper stage, jettison the trunk, and now it is time for a final re-entry after like a lot of launches, a lot of docking, a lot of finagling, I guess. Um, it is time to come in for landing. They're going to come in just a few, about a little over 100 kilometers off the coast of the Kerbal Space Center. Whew. That was a lot. That was that was a that was a big old mission. Big old mission. Um. Oh yeah, that was that was that just took a long time to do. So if you're wondering why this video is out a day late, that is why. Point is, flash down made it back. Whew. Anyway, on screen is all the members. Want to come in? You hit the join button below. Also on screen is the Patreon. Want to become a Patreon? Hit the link in the description. But that is going to be the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for watching. See you next time. Please join the comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. See you next time. And bye.